let's talk about transformations. So it might be the case that when you want to sit down and do analytics on a data set, you might actually want to be analyzing not the originally recorded values, but transformations of them, like logarithmic transformations, square root transformations. Why might this be? Well, let me illustrate this by loading up the reg class library and two of the data frames that live inside, the account data frame and the donor data frame. The donor data frame keeps track of donation amounts to a veterans organization, and we might be interested in studying the distribution of donation amount, maybe developing a predictive model that figures out how much someone's likely to donate. And in business analytics, this is pretty representative of the type of distribution that we see. The distribution of values is highly skewed because it has a long right-handed tail. Most of the values are clustered between maybe 0 and 20, and then larger values, they become increasingly more rare, but they give the overall shape of this distribution this long right-handed tail. And in fact, this histogram isn't very useful because it has very low resolution. Almost all of the action is going on between 0 and 20. We don't really have a good idea of what the overall shape of the distribution even is. Likewise, in the account data frame, we have some information about bank customers. If we make a histogram of the checking balances, that people have in their accounts, well, another skew distribution. What we see is that almost all of the account balances are pretty close to zero, either negative or positive, but there are a few customers that have very large amounts in their checking account. We'd say, once again, it's skewed towards the right, towards large, large values. Now, it turns out that most algorithms in data mining and most statistical methods work the best when the distribution of values that you're working with is roughly symmetric, not skewed like what we see here. So what's our recourse? Well, our recourse is to, instead of analyze the originally collected values, analyze a transformation of them instead. And that's perfectly acceptable to do, and you'll be doing this a lot in business analytics. So back to the donation amounts right here. Instead of analyzing the donation amounts themselves, what we might end up doing is analyzing their logarithms. So what we could do is replace the values in the donation amount column by the logarithms, base 10 for business analytics. And if we make a histogram of the distribution of the logarithms, we see something much more pleasant. The overall distribution are, is roughly symmetric, and we can do analytics actually much more effectively in cases like this. So the logarithmic transformation is one of the more popular transformations in business analytics because the results that we end up analyzing are fairly easy to interpret. When we see a value of 1 on the log scale, that corresponds to a value of 10 on the original scale. So a 1.0 is $10 donated. A 2.0 is $100 donated. How do you unlog a value that's on the log scale? We'll simply take 10 and raise it to the uh, quantity on the log scale. So if I saw a value of 3.6 on the log scale, that would correspond to 10 to the 3.6 power, or just about 4,000 on the original scale. So the logarithmic transformation is very useful to consider when you're dealing with a skewed distribution, because most algorithms work better with symmetric distributions. But you can't always employ the logarithmic transformation. Why is that? Well, there's some requirements mathematically for what can and cannot be logged. If we look at a summary of the checking balances in the account data frame, we see that we have some negative balances, some very large positive balances. And mathematically, you cannot take the logarithm of a number that's 0 or a negative number. So if I take the log base 10 of a really tiny number very close to 0, no problem, I get a value out. But a log 10 of 0 is minus infinity, and a log of a negative number is just NAN. Mathematically, that operation is not defined. So we saw the distribution of checking amounts was pretty skewed. We'd like to come up with a transformation that makes our lives easier. We'd maybe like to take the logarithms of them, but we can't because we have negative numbers. So what's the trick? Well, very often when we're doing predictive analytics especially, we can add in a constant to every single value in our data so that the smallest value actually is bigger than zero. In this case, we see that the smallest value in the checking balances is minus 774.83. So what if we looked at the distribution of the log base 10 
after adding in, say, 775. If I add it in, 775 to each amount, that's going to make the smallest value positive, and that's going to allow me to actually be able to take the logarithms of all the values. So there we go, much nicer symmetric distribution. That's great. In fact, I could add something bigger. If I added 1775, that changes a little bit of what the shape looks like, still kind of skewed here. Generally, my rule of thumb is that I like to add values so that the smallest value overall is just at about 1. The log base 10 of 1 is 0. And so adding a number so that the smallest value is 1 is my favorite thing to do, in which case I'd be adding 775 plus or 0.83. And that would be the distribution that I would work with. So when we're doing predictive analytics and we don't really care what we're doing as long as we're getting an effective model out, it doesn't really matter what we're adding to each number. Now, if we're doing descriptive analytics and actually talking about averages, standard deviations, etc., we want to be careful about what we're adding. If the values that we want to be taking logarithms of don't vary over a massive range, then we don't want to add in a massive number because that kind of fundamentally changes the meaning of what each of the values represent. Now, for checking balances, adding in $776 to every account here is a pretty big change for a lot of these accounts. The median is only 570, so we're more than doubling the amounts in, in half the, uh, the balances there. But it might be just what we end up having to do if we want to use this trick here. So my general rule of thumb is that, yeah, you can always do this when you're doing predictive analytics, but be a bit careful when doing descriptive analytics that you're not changing the values too much. All right, what other transformations do we worry about? Well, we also worry about scaling the original values. It turns out that many data mining algorithms work the best when each variable ranges over approximately the same range of values. Now, for this account data set, we can see that this is really not the case whatsoever. If I were to look at a summary of all the columns in the account data set, tenure, how long this customer has been with the company, goes from about 0 to 60. So it ranges over about 60 values here. The saving balance goes from 0 up to, what, 700,000? Um, and that checking balance goes from minus about 1,000 to about 280,000. Tenure varies over a much smaller range of numbers than checking balance and saving balance, and it turns out that that kind of messes up a lot of algorithms in data mining. We would like each one of these columns to vary over approximately the same range of values. So what scaling does is it makes it so that each column does range over the same uh, scale of values here, maybe between 0 and 1, or more commonly, scaling each column so that they, it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So we have positive and negative numbers. Positive for if the original number was above average, negative for if the, if the original number was below average. So take the original value, subtract off the mean, divide by the standard deviation of the values, and that's what we end up getting. So if we want to work with scaled values, and very often we will want to do this so that everything varies over approximately the same range, what we're going to use is the scale command in R. So let me load up the EX3 abalone data frame. Length goes from about 0.15 to 0.78. Rings goes from 3 to 27. It's a pretty big difference in scale here. So why don't we make it so that each column has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. All right, well, the scale command will actually do that for us, but we have to run that in tandem with the as.dataframe command. If I create a data frame called ab.scaled as the result of running as.dataframe on scale ex3.abalone. What we'll see is that now, if I look at a summary of ab.scaled, then each column now has a mean of 0. Each column is going to have a standard deviation of 1. So the amount by which the values vary is approximately the same. Now, the min and the max still might be a little bit different from column to column, but notice that the 25th percentile is all about minus 0.5, minus 0.6 or so, very close. That's the value that's bigger than 25% of the values in the data. The 75th percentile, the value that's bigger than 75% of the values in the data, all at about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 again. So scaling 
it helps the data vary over approximately the same range of values for each column, and that's going to help out a bunch of our data mining algorithms.